In this poster, we discuss how computational substrates can be designed using open-ended evolution. Computing with unconventional materials is a growing area of research. Unconventional computers have the potential to be faster and consume less power than conventional CMOS technology. However, to achieve this requires innovations in material design and discovery of new computational models. Designing new materials creates a significant technical challenge. There are many approaches to material design. The design process and evaluation of materials is really expensive, labor intensive, and requires considerable expertise. Another challenge is creating the computational models to fit these materials. Having the right model is critical. The model should naturally fit the materials implementation as a poor model can cause inefficiencies. For example, power consumption and the need for correction. Before discussing design and models, Let's just talk about how can we determine when a physical system is computing and not simply undergoing other natural processes. For this, abstraction representation theory was developed. AR theory helps us define when a material substrate is computing with respect to its computational model. In figure one, we have the full compute cycle, starting from the initial abstract problem A, and this is encoded into terms of an abstract computational model, MP, instantiation into a physical computer P and physical evolution of the device from HP over to P prime. And then we decode the physical state to the abstract answer to the problem A. So AR theory helps us describe when a physical system is computing with respect to a model. But in order to compute with a device, we need a suitable model. This is where reservoir computing comes in. Reservoir computing is a popular model to exploit a range of novel physical devices. Its structure and simplicity make it suitable to many open nonlinear dynamical systems. Currently, there are a wide range of physical RC systems out there, including chemical, optical, spintronic, etc. What makes the reservoir computing model so popular is its exploitation of the untrained uh, dynamical system at the center, combined with a simple readout layer, which can be trained to specific tasks as you can see here in figure two. Next, we introduce a framework to test the suitability of a model, as AR theory doesn't do this itself. For this, we developed the chart framework. Chart's primary role was to explore and compare the computational expressiveness of physical materials with respect to the reservoir model. The framework characterizes the material's quality according to its range and diversity of physical behaviors. In figure three, we have the step-by-step -step workflow Step one, we create an abstract space to explore, map, and measure. This represents the reservoir's properties of the material when configured. In this space, we use n independent measures, for example, nonlinearity, memory, or generalization ability. In step two, we reconfigure the material to get different reservoir behaviors. To carry out this exploration, we use algorithms such as novelty search. Novelty search is used to explore the space as much as possible rather than looking for specific instances. In step three, we measure how much of this space is covered by using voxels. The total number of voxels forms a measure of the quality. You can think of this quality as an approximation of the system's dynamical freedom, or its ability to instantiate many different reservoirs. For example, if the quality is low, this would suggest the poor fit of the model. To discuss design, let's use an analogy for the AR compute cycle. First, think of the model as a language, the representation as the program, and the physical system as the hardware executing the program. In figure four, we show how these separate. Previously, Chark was used to reprogram or configure the material to produce novel behaviors. However, it is equally possible to manipulate the hardware directly and even design new languages, i.e. models. For material design, we can simply add new parameters related to physical properties, for example, structure and layout. For model design, we can change the properties used in the abstract space. In addition, what we could do is we could create a common language, such as a dynamical systems language, to create and explore new models. We don't, however, have to think of these individually. We could use a code design approach where we apply different combinations and each are improved and also the fit between them. So in conclusion, we have showed how we can design and evaluate computational substrates and their models. What we've done is combine different concepts to help us explore the design of unconventional computers.